guys, it's Robin, our Silent Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. A few videos back, we made the sleeves for our to-go coffee cups, and I had a request to see if I can come up with something that would fit on a mason jar with a handle. So we're basically going to make the same thing, but instead of having it curved, we're just going to go ahead and use a straight piece of fabric. I decided since a lot of times when you're drinking out of a mason jar, it has a lot of condensation. So I'm going to use flannel as my backing, hoping that that's maybe going to be a little bit more absorbent and absorb some of that condensation. I have cotton batting on the inside and cotton fabric on the outside. You can use any combination that you'd like. Just find something that's going to be a little absorbent. You could even try using a piece of like terry cloth that comes from maybe uh, an old hand towel or a new hand towel would be fine too. You can cut a piece of toweling material because we know that that's going to be absorbent or some type of a washcloth. You should be able to find one about this size. This one I made for my favorite coffee cup. It is a Me Boss You Not. I received this as a gift from Rob's best friend many, many years ago. It was a good joke among us for a while. But you see how that still fits nicely around you have the handle it still covers the cup evenly and you have your button and your elastic hair tie to hold it all together so we're going to try to move through this one pretty quickly since we've already seen how to make these what i did is i just went ahead and i took my cup whichever cup you have i don't know if they're all the same size or not but you can just go ahead and measure around and mine measures 10 inches around my handle is very wide here it's not quite as wide here so this is going to allow me to have either either i won't have to worry about my little band going around and being hooked up anywhere i can hook it up anywhere i can slide it around so that it goes underneath there if i make it a little too long it'll be okay if it goes underneath on this hand part here where the handle goes so then I measured it, I got 10 inches. We are going to be losing about a quarter inch on our seams on each end, so it's gonna be about a half inch shorter. You can make it a little bit longer if you'd like. Then I also decided how wide do I want it? I can make it just as wide as my handle so it can slip through. My handle is uh, just shy of three inches because you wanna go from the inside to the inside so that it does fit through that space. But since I'm gonna use my elastic, I'm gonna be okay. I decided that for maximum coverage, because if you're gonna use this to help sop up some of that condensation that drips off of it from a nice cold iced tea on a hot summer day, then I'm gonna go with three and a half inches. Another reason I went with three and a half inches is because I have three and a half inches in my scrap bin. So now I've determined that it's going to be three and a half inches wide before my seam allowances, and it's gonna be 10 inches long, once again, before my seam allowances. I am going to use cotton batting to help aid with that absorption of the condensation. I have a pretty piece of fabric. I thought some ice cream sundaes would be a nice thought to have for our cool beverages in the summer. And this time I thought I'd go ahead and try a flannel on the back. So this will be the part that actually touches the glass. And then maybe this will be a little bit more absorbent than just the straight fabric. And then if you want to try something different, maybe you want to get a hand towel and cut a piece out of that. Or if you have washcloths that are long enough, that would be really nice and absorbent. One of those, if you really want to be very, very absorbent, you can even pick these up at Walmart, at the car washing place, or at the Dollar Tree. One of those chamois, those things that are supposed to absorb 100 times their weight in water and stuff like that. That would be a really good idea to put on the back or even on the inside, since it might not be all that pretty looking, that it would help absorb a lot of that condensation. I have my hair tie and my button that I'm gonna go ahead and use for this project. If you don't have a hair tie, just get a length of elastic about three inches or longer. We're gonna use that as our loop, but you can use any type of elastic for your loop. Stitching this together is super easy. I am going to put down my batting and then I'm going to lay my backing right sides up and I'm going to take my outer fabric, my pretty fabric, and put that face down. So in whatever order you wanna do this, you just wanna make sure your two fabrics are right sides facing. 
and then your batting is on one side or the other. So that way when we stitch it all together, it'll flip. Now I'm gonna pop open this one end here so I don't forget to put my elastic in. My hair ties have a piece of metal in there that I don't wanna worry about my sewing machine or have it inside of my project. So I'm just gonna easily snap that off, make sure it doesn't fly anywhere. I'm gonna fold it in half and you can measure to find your exact halfway point, but I'm just gonna go ahead and guess where it's at. And I wanna tack this down just so that when I flip it, I don't have to worry about holding it with pins or clips or anything like that. So I'm just gonna pop it underneath my sewing machine in about an eighth of an inch while holding these two pieces together. I'm gonna pop that under there. Just give it a few stitches back and forth. That's just gonna hold it in place so I don't have to worry about it. So did you notice that I put it in between my backing fabric and my pretty front fabric? So whichever one I'm gonna see on the outside. So where these two are together and then I have my batting on the back still. You could have stitched it to this side, but I find that putting it with the batting and the backing, it just gives you that extra bit to sew through so it just makes it a little easier. Then we're gonna stitch around this. I'm going to go ahead and do a quarter inch. I'm going to leave my machine at about a 2.4 because that's where it likes to be. I'm gonna stitch a quarter inch all the way around. Leave a couple inches for turning. You can leave a little more, a little less. We are going to sew this together with the sewing machine. So if you need to feel it's easier for you to use a larger opening, then you can go ahead and do that. I'm going to back stitch when I start just so I don't pop my stitches when I flip it and then just stitch around it. Now when I get to the end that has the elastic, I'm gonna go over backstitch this a few times. I'm not gonna worry too much that these are specifically solidly together and touching. You could put a pin in it if here if you want, but if it spreads out a little bit, it's still gonna work just the same. So I'm just gonna let it be like that. And I'm gonna go back tack over that two or three times. Since that's gonna be your high stretch area because you're gonna be pulling on that elastic, left my little opening and that's it. I really hadn't thought about using a ShamWow until I just started this project as we were talking. And I just popped into my head and I thought, wow, that would really be a good idea to be something that's nice and absorbent. Put it on the inside instead of batting, in addition to the batting, however you wanna do it. I think that would be really absorbent and still keep it washable. So I am just trimming off my corners to avoid that extra bulk and if your seams, if your fabric moved at all, you can trim off any excess. Maybe cut back a little bit on the seam here where that, if your hair tie is sticking out or your elastic, you can trim that off. Then when we flip this, we need to go here. We need to go in between our, our main fabrics. We don't wanna go between a fabric and the batting because that's gonna put your batting on the outside. And you can do it that way if you want, but it's not gonna be having the pretty fabrics out. So if you need to use hemostats, you can go ahead and do that, but it's still, it's only 10 inches long. So I can just pop it out easily. And then take your not too sharp turning tool. Once again, my fancy dancy crochet hook. It's about the only thing I found useful for these plastic crochet hooks. I haven't been able to crochet with them at all. So then I just poke out my corners I'm gonna take this over to my pressing station. Now I'm gonna tuck this open edge in and make sure everything's nice and lined up. I'm gonna give it a good steam press, but I'm gonna just stay away from the elastic because I don't wanna add any extra heat to that. Make sure everything looks good. You don't wanna have it so you have a big divot and then it, you know, it dips in here. So you wanna pull everything out and in and just fiddle with it for a second to make sure everything looks nice. And since it's a rectangle, we don't even have to worry if our fabric are right side up or wrong side up, unless you're really particular about what side your elastic comes out of. If it's upside down when you go to put it on your jar, you can just go ahead and flip it over and it'll be right side up. 
So now I like to start right about where the hole is and I'm gonna go and do a top stitching, which is basically about an eighth of an inch all the way around. I am sticking with my white thread. It's going to blend in fine. It'll pop up a little bit on the brown. So you can go ahead and use a yellow or brown matching fabric. You can do a little fancy stitches around here if you want to spice it up a little bit. But I'm just gonna go ahead and top stitch. I'm gonna start just before the hole so that I know I'm getting that closed up right away and I don't have to worry about it. Sometimes in the corner, and because you're just an eighth of an inch away, you've got to kind of give it that little extra oomph to get through, but everything seems to go through pretty easily, and I don't struggle with it too much. It's, we've sewn so many cozies by now, we should all be experts at it, right? Ha, I was going to put it on, we don't have a button. All right, so our next step is the button. Let's figure out where we're going to want to put it. We, just like we did with our coffee cozies, just going to put it on there, hold it, give it just, you don't want to like rip it all the way back here because that makes these pieces get a little crooked and wonky. You just kind of hold it, give it a little bit and figure out where you're going to want to put your button. So I'm going to put mine right about there. We are using a large enough button so that it's easy for our larger piece of hair tie to wrap around it. Once again, I'm not using one of those little tiny buttons. I'm going to go ahead and stitch it on with just regular old sewing thread. I will put a link up in the iCard to the tutorial for the coffee sleeve. And in there, I talked about sewing on buttons and different things like that. We're going to go ahead and sew this one on without using our Q-tip. And I'll show you with this project, since it's not really like a, a shirt or anything, that is going to still be fine. And the elastic will fit around it. Now, of course, if you are one with your sewing machine and you know how to use all the fancy dancy things, there is a way that you can use your sewing machine to sew the buttons on. I haven't practiced that yet or figured out how to do it. Maybe sometime in the future we'll work on that. But for now, I just stitch it on by hand. And you're going to just pop it on around your drink. Please don't lay your drink on the side like that to go ahead and put your cozy on. But see that? Now you have it all set. Your drink will sweat a little bit and this will be able to catch it. Put a nice little coaster underneath it and you'll be all set to go. Now you can fancy these up a little bit. You can take your embroider machine, since this is a nice flat piece of surface, you can go ahead and embroider someone's name on it, embroider, you know, Southern Sweet Tea or, you know, whatever it is that you're drinking, iced coffee, something that's, we all have our little phrases and nicknames and stuff that we like. You can easily put that on there. You can also do some hand embroidery or put some applique or just use some fun fabric and leave it as is. And of course, we can also go ahead and use our scrap fabrics and do a quilt as you go or just use a scrappy piece of fabric on there. I find that these are really fun just to have a nice little novelty fabric on there, something that matches the season or your drink. I think it'd be really good to pop into a Christmas stocking or something for the office party. It's one of those nice little handmade gifts that can really just work for anyone because we all have people in our lives that really don't need anything or don't want anything, but something as simple like this is usually something they would enjoy. So I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.